The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the exciting world of your own imagination. The live body, muscles rippling, seems suspended in air, twisted in its last agony. The goat legs flexed in their last spring. The beautiful boy's face transformed by a snarl of agony as the arrow bites through the back flesh to bury itself deep in the heart. This is a legendary bronze statue called the Dying Fawn. Legendary in more ways than one. Jameson? Miss Herbert. Uh, not any longer. This is my husband, David Cavelli. How do you do, sir? I've heard so much about you. It's my pleasure, Jameson. Congratulations, Miss Abbott. I, I, I mean, Mrs... Oh, time for that afterwards. Are the others here? Mrs. Abbott and Mr. Pierce arrived this afternoon. Are they with my... Are they with him now? No, Miss Sarah. Like you, they... They were too late. Oh, no. You mean he's dead? I, it was to be expected. When? The statue started to bleed the night before last. Our mystery drama, The Bleeding Statue, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Patricia Elliott and Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What is more mystical than a statue? The wounded fawn. No one is sure that it was not originally chiseled in marble that the bronze we know today was not taken from a long-lost original. Where it comes from, no one knows. Where it was perhaps best known to the public at large was in its last appearance, or disappearance, on the stage of the Palace Theater as the climax of the farewell tour of Prior Abbott, the Merlin of the Magicians. Thank you. Thank you. And now, if you ladies and gentlemen will permit my greatest illusion, the death of the wounded fawn. Part the curtains, please. There he is for the last time on any stage. I beg your pardon, dear audience, the second last time. For if I'm to make him disappear... I would have to make him reappear, and both in front of your very eyes. Observe the dying fawn, 1,440 pounds of cast bronze. I invite any member of the audience who questions this assessment of weight to join me on the stage. I only wish to know that all of you are ready to believe that this statue does have a life and volition of its own, for it is about to disappear before your very eyes. Concentrate, observe, be aware, and beware. That was back in 1936, David. Fifteen years before I was born, 18 for you. How do you know about that final performance? You weren't there. <laughs> Neither was my mother. She was about five then. Strange. What? I can't connect your grandfather. Um, now, what do I call him? Not what you do. <laughs> the wizard. It's kind of corny. Not for me. 
It was my mother's second marriage. I was five years old. Mother was about 28. He was 57. Much as I loved him and as full as life as he was, I, I never could call him dad. And grandpa would have been an insult. So because of all the marvelous tricks he did, he became the wizard. Oh, David, you never saw anyone so, so young as the wizard. In body as well as in mind. That's why I can't... Easy, easy does it, baby. You've done your crying for him. Oh, it's awful to think of him lying in that coffin, dead. I, I can't believe it isn't just another illusion. And when we go down to dinner that he won't have escaped like Houdini and be sitting waiting for us with a big smile. I'm afraid even the wizard can't spring himself loose from this one. Well, I'd better get my best bib and tie on to greet your relatives. I wouldn't worry about them. Well, I don't want to make too bad an impression. Your stepbrother's a pretty important man in my life. Because he's president of Abbott's Tool and Machine. Oh, yes, is just a figurehead. Now, there's only one man who could... Come on now, Sarah. Uh, I just can't believe he's dead. He was... Oh, David, you just had to have known him to understand. He was... he was indestructible. Darling, he was going on 76. But he didn't look or act more than 50. Well, you hadn't seen him in more than two years. Well, yes, you're right, of course, but even then, even with a heart attack and my mother dying... Look, you, you don't have to tell me, Sarah. <laughs> God knows he was a giant to me. But not as a magician, uh, as an industrialist, an inventor, an innovator. I never knew all that came from uh, from being a... Well, it sounds crazy to put it this way, but a, a plain magician. Oh, he was no plain magician. I've seen blueprints of some of his illusions, and they're more complicated than splitting the atom. Hey, 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 it's almost 7.30. Now, look, I, oh. I've got to have at least a clean shirt. Yes? Excuse me, madam, but dinner will be served in half an hour. We'll be right down, Jamie. He's always so formal. Well, he kind of gives me the shivers. What was that bit about the statue starting to bleed? Oh, oh that that's a silly old legend. Uh, you want to tell your silly young husband what? <laughs> well, I, I think the wizard probably made it up for the act. Well, I'm persistent, if nothing else. Made up what? Well, it's a very old statue, you know. Quite priceless. Well, since it happens to be my hobby, I know as much about it as you. It's either fired from a mold of a Greek original in marble, or else it was commissioned by uh, Cosmo de' Medici in the early 1600s and is possibly by Benvenuto Cellini himself. Right? Right. But impossible to authenticate? That's right. But it did belong at one time or another to the de' Medicis and to some later kings of France, they say. Mm, whoever they are. And what exactly do they say? That whenever the head of a household to whom it belongs is marked for death, the statue starts to bleed. <laughs> I don't want to be late for dinner. No, we won't be. I, I just had to see this fabulous statue. Well, there he is. Wow. What a setting. He's magnificent, whoever the sculptor was. He's sad. Poor wounded God. God? Come closer. Look at him. He's not just a fawn. He has to be Pan himself. Without the horns. Ageless, deathless, the spirit of youth and life. Just like the wizard. I never thought he could really die. Hush, hush, baby. That's the only thing none of us can sidestep. Hey, where's this blood supposed to come from? From the air wound, of course. Right here? It's between the shoulders? Oh, I suppose I've never seen it. It's it's just a story, David. What, what is it? It's nothing. Let me see your hand. You touched the statue. Look, it's just rust, darling. That's all. Bronze doesn't rust, David. That's blood. Uh, 
Are you sure this is sherry, Pierce? As advertised, and as always, nothing but the best. It doesn't taste right somehow. I doubt if anything will until we all find out just where we stand. It's upsetting that he died so suddenly and unexpectedly. You don't suppose he could have left everything to Sarah? He couldn't do that to us. Suppose he has. I'll fight it tooth and nail. I'm his daughter. (laughs) Daughter in law, to be exact. I'm the last best hope. At least my father, your husband, was his son. I hope he's recognized that in the will. And how do we handle this new husband Sarah has sprung upon us? I've no idea. It's too bad the wizard didn't know about him before he kicked off. I doubt if he'd have reacted too well to some European opportunist who wanted to pick up a nice American girl with a lot of money in the family. Well, he isn't here to react. It's up to us. Uh, pardon me, madam. Yes, Jefferson, what is it? Mr. and Mrs. Cavelli have returned from the garden. Dinner is set. Thank you, Jefferson. We'll be right in. Well, shall we start reacting? Kiss the bride and meet the groom? <laughs> Since we all seem to have finished dinner, shall we retire to the drawing room for coffee? And the moment of truth. You can clear if you wish, Jameson. Yes, Mrs. Hubbard. Oh, thank you, Jameson. I can pour the coffee and Pierce will serve the liqueurs. And, Jameson, you can make your arrangements about the tape, whatever they are. Very good, madam. Will we have to come to the study to hear it? No, madam. There are speakers in every room in the house. And I was instructed by the late Mr. Abbott that the tape would activate itself at exactly nine o'clock this evening. Activate itself? Aye, Mr. Cavelli. You see, I don't know where it is. Uh, You never knew my father, Signor Cavelli. In his later years, he was somewhat uh, eccentric. (laughs) Will you escort me to the drawing room? No, of course, Mrs. Abbott. Nutty is a fruitcake, she means. Don't talk about the wizard like that. Mm. You know, Sarah, you weren't around in the past few years. I saw him two years ago. Well? Well, well, that was right after his heart attack, and Mother's death right on top of that naturally was knocked out. But nothing could ever keep him down for long. <laughs> That's what you think. He buried himself alive here with Jameson. None of us saw him since the day you went back. But he wrote me in Italy. (laughs) That's more contact than Mother and I had with him. It's a pity you went back to the art school. Don't. Don't make me feel any worse than I already do. He made me go. I thought you were the apple of his eye. I also happened to be a carbon copy of my mother. And the reminder was too poignant. You think I'd have gone back to Italy otherwise? There seemed to have been other attractions. You mean David? I hadn't even met him then. I wish you never had. I'd always hoped... I think the wizard hoped, too, that you and I... Why, Pierce, you're my older brother. Not quite. Not by blood. Just by accident of the wizard's many marriages. Older, yes, guilty as charged. Is 16 years or... Whatever it is, all that important. Oh, come on, Pete. Oh, it didn't matter a hoot to the wizard and your mother. It was damn near double that with them. It hadn't anything to do with age or family. Just choice. Well, all right. Oh, well, let's go in. And on our way, why don't you tell me more of the man you did choose? I suppose we really should have had espresso for you, Signor Cavelli. No, no, no. Plain American coffee, Mrs. Abbott. Oh, really? I thought all Italians like... <laughs> Mrs. Abbott, I'm, I'm not Italian. Oh? Sarah met you in Rome. Florence. Well, Florence. And your name is Cavelli? Well, that's right. But Italian-American. Uh, my father and I were both born in this country. Oh, how nice. But you lived in Italy. Well, my father was an engineer with United States Motors... Two years ago, while I was studying to be an engineer at MIT in Boston, the company moved him to their plant in Torino. When I graduated, I went over to join them and uh, met Sarah. You said in Florence? Yes, at the Piazza della Signorina, looking at the statues. You knew, of course, who Sarah's father was. Well, I knew who Prior Abbott was, but I never guessed that Sarah was his daughter. Stepdaughter. The wizard actually only had one child. Uh, your husband, which makes you Prior Rabbit's daughter-in-law. What time is it, David? It's just about nine. Well, people, the moment of truth is almost upon us. 
I don't know about the rest of you, but I think I could do with something to calm the nerves. Brandy for anyone? Oh, I have my coffee. No, I don't know. Oh, why don't you, darling? I might join you. Why not? Uh, Signor Cavalli, would you oh, help... Since, since we are family, uh, may we make it David? <laughs> Very well, David. Uh, help Pierce get the brandies. I'll pour the coffee. As you wish. Uh, tell me, Sarah, did the wizard know about this hasty marriage of yours? It wasn't all that hasty. Except at the last moment. You haven't answered my question. No, the answer is no. But let me explain exactly what... Ah, tis the witching hour. Pierce. Well, the whole thing is a bit spooky, Mother. And in seconds, all of us are going to face our futures, just where each of us is going, and all manipulated like puppets from beyond the grave. I wonder what particular trick the wizard has up his sleeve this time. We're about to find out. Pierce Abbott termed it the moment of truth. Are we to hear it from a disembodied voice speaking out of the past? And what will the truth mean for the four people sitting, awaiting that voice? I'll return shortly with Act Two. in the late 20s, Abbott House is a gothic castle perched on a promontory that juts out into the mouth of the Connecticut River. Now bathed in fitful moonlight, its flying buttresses and ornamental gables seem almost as much of an illusion as any of the great ones that made the immortal P.J. Abbott the beginnings of his fabulous fortune on the stage. An illusion of immortality fostered at this moment as his voice speaks from the grave. Good evening, dear family. It almost seems like the good old days when I stepped out behind the footlights. Of course, in those days, I never dreamed that I would one day exercise my powers from beyond the grave. When you hear this, I shall be dead, my will signed, sealed, attested, and delivered to the hands of my attorney. It leaves everything I have completely and totally to my beloved Sarah. Without let nor hindrance, now that she is 21 years of age. Everything? How dare you? Good God, what am I going to do? Oh, no, I, I don't want it all. Subject to these provisions. In the event that my daughter-in-law and her son will sign papers prepared by my attorneys waiving all right or claim to my estate or legal moves to contest it, they will receive jointly an income yearly till their deaths of what I shall call 30 pieces of silver, the equivalent of $30,000. I further make it a condition that until the will is probated, that all three of you shall stay here at Abbott's house, nor shall any of you leave the grounds for any reason whatsoever. He's crazy. Don't ever say that about the wizard. And just in case any of you question my sanity, my will is attested to by three objective psychiatrists who have found me sound of mind. And now for a few personal messages. Can't someone turn that off? I don't want to hear any more. I've arranged uh, there's no way for you to turn this recording off. I want you all to hear. Sarah, you and your mother were the two bright spots in my life. Your mother was taken from me. I don't think it was an accident. But I can't prove otherwise. So the best I can do is what I have done. But please, Sarah, whatever the others do, you stay here. For here, I promise you, you are safe. If ever you need help, run to the statue and ask for it. You will find it. A last good night from the wizard who trusts you and loves no one but you. Insane. Absolutely mad as a hatter. What was all that about Sarah's mother? He's trying to suggest that we had something to do with her death. Oh, uh, Sarah, I hope you don't oh, think... Yes. I don't want to think at all at the moment. I've been traveling for something like 16 hours and my head is splitting. I'm a bit cross-eyed myself. If you'll excuse us, I think we'll turn in. Yes, we're all a bit rocky. Come on, Sarah. 
Yes, David. Will you excuse us, Mrs. Abbott? Of course. We're both really pushed. Good night, Aunt Rose. Good night. I'm not going to let him get away with it, Pierce. Take it easy, Mother. Not on your life. For that matter, on both our lives. That's what we're going to have to fight for, baby boy. Oh, would you please stop that? I'm sorry, Pierce, silly habit, but you, you're all I've ever had. Well, let's not stop down that road. No, 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 you're quite right. That isn't what has to concern us at the moment. That little witch, that someone from nowhere, just like her mother... She's not going to take away Abbott's house and the business and everything else from us without a fight. It's ours. Marty, the wizard left the will he said he did. Wills can be voided. I wouldn't count on it. I'll take odds his can't be overturned. He's sure to have covered every angle. Except one. What's that? The heir has got to be alive to succeed to the estate. I think I'm too tired to get ready for bed. David? Mm. What? What are you staring at out the window? That damn statue. It haunts me. Why? Oh, a lot of reasons. Sarah, I don't like this. I don't like any part of it. What, David? It's all so crazy. Statues that bleed and disembodied voices on hidden tape recorders, your stepsister or whatever relation she is to you, and Pierce, the suggestion that your mother's death was... How did she die, darling? Well, I was away, so I only know what I was told. The wizard had had a heart attack, and she'd been nursing him. She came downstairs and told them that she wanted a breath of air, and she went out... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is them? Them? Pierce and, and Rose and Jameson. Where were they? Rose and Pierce were in the drawing room. Jameson was in the pantry. And none of them followed your mother? Followed her? How did she die? She... I guess she had a sort of fainting spell... And she fell and hit her head somewhere on the statue. And then while she was unconscious, she she drowned in, the, in that little pool behind the statue. You're sure of that? Well, what else could have happened? There was a coroner's inquest and a lot of newspaper stories, of course. Then what do you make of your father's obvious uh, accusation that they were responsible? I don't know. Maybe they're right. That the wizard was... was never really himself again. Oh, David. I wish you could have known him. He was marvelous. The most marvelous person I ever knew. Before you. Holy smoke. What is it? The statue, it's... It isn't there anymore. It's... gone. What do you mean? Where? Wait a minute. A cloud just drifted across the moon. As soon as it clears, you'll see. But it couldn't just disappear. But it did. There's nothing there but the empty pedestal. And the grotto and that little pool rippling in the moonlight. Wait a minute. That cloud's just about to clear and we're... I don't believe it. Well, you'll have to. There it is, large as life. But it wasn't there a moment ago. Oh, darling, there must have been a tree branch in the way. How could it disappear? Oh, David, David, I'm just wrung out. I've got to go to bed. I, I just want to sleep away today. Do you mind if I use the bathroom first, dear? Of course, darling. I, I want to run downstairs for a moment anyway. Where are you going? I won't be a minute. I just left, I left something in the car. I want to get it. Oh, thank you for bringing me upstairs, Pierce. That's all right. What are we going to do about Sarah? What do you mean? Oh, now, don't play games with me. Are we just going to sit still for her taking over everything? What else can we do? We didn't when we thought it was going to be our mother. Look, we got away with it once. We're not going to get away with it again. We're going to have to. And within the next few days, if we're going to. Huh. 
Not here. We don't have any chance anywhere else. The girl has got to die. What good would that do us? The estate would go to her husband. Her husband? Oh. Now, that's very interesting, Pierce. This young upstart, ambitious, carefully marrying a young girl without her family's knowledge, obviously anxious to make profit out of it. What do you have in mind, Mother? Why wouldn't he be just as anxious to get rid of Sarah as we are, Pierce? I would never be able to get away with convincing anyone of that. Now, there's only one way. How? Now that Grandfather's dead, and we know the secret of the statue, I can fix it so it will seem to kill them. Both of them? Was that necessary? (laughs) It's the only way. Hmm. Nothing there now. Heaven knows it seems solid enough. I wonder if this is for that. You know, there... it's, it's Jameson, sir. And Miss Sarah was asking for you. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll be right in. Jameson. Yes, sir. You've been with the family a long time. Uh, with Mr. Abbott, I was, sir. Nearly 55 years. I started out with him as an assistant in his magic days. He was about the grand illusionist of all time, I guess. Uh, no one better, sir. He was beyond peer. And this uh, statue was one of his better ones, huh? Before it got cemented into place here at Abbott House, uh, that's nearly 40 years ago. But he used to make it disappear right on stage, didn't he? Well, in a manner of speaking. What does that mean? An illusion, don't you see? It never moved. It took 11 tons of mirrors and 14 helpers to make it happen. (laughs) That was the old days. Uh, They won't come again. Magic's all gone. Well, what about the rigmarole of the the, the statue bleeding? Uh, That's something else again, sir. That's way out of the past. I don't know. I I thought I found blood by the arrow wound earlier tonight. It's it's dry now. It's been wiped off. I, I don't know by whom, sir. What shall I tell Miss Sarah, sir? Uh, you, you don't have to tell her anything. I'll, uh, I'll go in with you. When you're tired, fancy plays strange tricks, Mr. Cavelli. Uh, I was thinking of making a toddy for Miss Sarah if she'd like it. Uh, There's nothing better for putting you off to sleep. I'm sure I don't have to ask her. She'd love it. Uh, And yourself, sir? No. No, I'll I'll skip the hot drink. Maybe you'd like to join me in a nightcap, David. (laughs) Where did you spring from? The wall? (laughs) (laughs) No, as a matter of fact, I was headed for the pantry here to ask Jameson to make one of his famous toddies for Mother. Uh, And for you, Mr. Abbott? Oh, no, thank you. I'm a cigar freak. Oh, uh, Jameson, when you've made the drinks, uh, I'll take them up. Oh, that's all right, sir. I'm happy to be of service. I'll bring them up when they're ready. Want to join me in a nightcap while we're waiting, David? Okay. Uh, Just a quickie, though. Then I'll walk you upstairs. Come on, Mother. I took the rest of the powder out of the sleeping pills for Jane. It's right here, Pierce, but how are you going... Sheer luck. Jameson is making a hot toddy for both of you girls. With this, I can fix Sarah's so she'll never wake up. We can't get away with it. Leave it to me. David and I just had a good night drink. I only had some chloral hydrate to slip in that. But he's going to wake up with a large headache tomorrow. Dare we risk it? We have no choice, Mother. We've got to go for broke. If we don't, I'm dead. And as you well know, I'm just selfish enough to make sure that everyone else goes before me. David? Oh, thank the Lord, it's you. Come here, darling, quickly. Sorry, sorry. I I don't know. I I gotta get to bed. What, What is it? I just looked out the window again, and you're right. The statue just isn't there. It's completely disappeared. Statue. Statue? Something about statue. Darling, I'm sorry. What's the matter, David? I'm down one drink. I guess I've one drink too many. I just, um, 
Yes, I'm blind drunk. Oh, I was the one who was sleepy before. Now I'm wide awake, and you're... Oh, Jameson, bring you a nice hot toddy. Put you to sleep, like me. David? No, oh, <sighs> David. Don't leave me alone. I'm scared. <sighs> David! David, I don't know what I'm scared of, but I'm scared. <laughs> And, well, she should be scared. For with David's collapse, the forces of evil, real and unreal, swarm about Sarah, threatening her very life. Perhaps most terrifying of all is the absence of the statue. For with it gone, and David drugged in sleep, where can she run to for sanctuary? I'll return shortly with Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. Scudding clouds that alternately mask and unmask the moon play a ghostly light across the long, curving staircase as Pierce Abbott descends it. The file of lethal powder spilled from the sleeping pills hidden in his hand. Silently, he crosses to the swinging door of the pantry, edging it open slowly, disappointed to find Jamie facing him. Yes, Mr. Abbott. Oh, just wondering if the drinks were ready to take up. We'll just have to add the hot water. Anything I can do for you, sir? Oh, uh, yes. Um... E- excuse my back, sir. Oh, that's quite all right. Just getting the kettle. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, what did you say before? I-, I wondered what brought you down again, sir. Oh, yes. Anything I can help you with? No, I, I thought perhaps I might have left my lighter down. Ah. Indeed you did. I put it right here on the tray with a glass for your mother. <laughs> yes, thanks. Uh, uh, Jameson, it's all right. I, I might as well take this tray up with me. Hmm? If you wish, sir. All set, mother. Here you are. What is it? One of Jameson's nice, uncomplicated toddies mixed by his own hand. As of this moment, he's delivering the same to Sarah. The same? Uh, he couldn't testify otherwise. His back was turned when I salted it. With my barbiturate? Enough to kill a gorilla. We can't get away with drowning them the way we did her mother. We won't even try to. No, they'll die quite differently. How? I've been experimenting with a statue, and I've made a discovery. It moves on hinges and counterweights and escapes into the pool. Take those hinge pins out, reduce the counterweights, and it will collapse and crush anything in the way of its fall. The secret room would be exposed. No, no, there's a false base which slides into place. The whole thing will seem nothing but a tragic accident. Another chapter to add to its legend. When will you get them there? Tonight, when everyone's asleep. Sarah may be dead already. David is dead weight, but I can drag them through the secret tunnel. It's mostly downhill. Come on, drink your toddy, go to sleep, and uh, leave this to me. I won't draw an easy breath all night. Mm, By tomorrow, you'll be able to. We both will. Oh, it's you, Jamie. I thought you might like a little toddy before you turn in, Miss Sarah. (laughs) The Scottish panacea? (laughs) Not exactly, but it does make for a long, peaceful sleep. I could use that tonight. Your new husband didn't want any. No, he's sound asleep already. Well, see you tomorrow, Jamie. (laughs) You'd better, or the old wizard would never forgive me. I only wish he were here. So do I, Miss Sarah. But don't you worry. Wherever he is, he's looking out for you. Turn the key in the door after I leave. You'll sleep sounder. Maybe I'll do that. Good night, Jamie. Good night, Miss Sarah. All locked up, Jamie. Hi, Mr. Rabbit. And off to bed, then. Hi. Are you off yourself? Uh, hardly keep my eyes open. Uh, you've given Miss Abbott her drink, all right. Oh, yes. Uh, did... Uh, did I what? Did you get your mother's to her? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Well, this is where I leave you. Up 
The wooden staircase. My nightly climb. Sleep sound, Jamie. Sorry, Jamie, old boy. I just have to make sure. What? Who is it? Don't turn on that. Pierce. What are you doing with that pillow? What are you doing? Awake. Keep away from me. Pierce, keep away. I'll scream. Don't do you any good. There's no one to hear. David. David. Ah, you might as well try to waken the dead. Oh, no. He's not. He's not. Not yet. Just knocked out. But he will be. You must be crazy. Only desperate. It's the same thing. Keep away from me. Keep away. Sorry, Sarah. I have to. No. <laughs> No one to help you anymore, Sarah. No one. It's, it's moving. Help! Help! You're safe, Sarah. Come quickly down into the vault. Mister, you're alive. Quickly! You're... Damn you, grandfather! Can't you stay decently dead? Damn you, son! Can't you stay decent? I'll make you stay dead this time. I've gone too far to hang back. I warn you, I won't hesitate to use the gun. Then don't, or it will be too late. Chills! No, I. <laughs> no. I won't let you trick me again. The last trick is going to be mine. Wizard, look out! The statue! Too late! We all go together! There isn't anything I can do, Sarah. I can't. Oh, my head. Are you all right, darling? I'm still woozy and my head is splitting, but... Oh, here comes Jameson. Jamie, did you get the police? Hurry, Miss Sarah. They're on their way on an ambulance. How is Mrs. Abbott? I'm afraid she's... She's... Oh, poor Rose. I wouldn't spare her much sympathy. She only got the drink that was meant for you. Thanks to Jamie. I uh, switched them. Is Mr. Abbott? He's alive. Uh, Pierce is dead. Oh. Oh. Sarah. Yes, Wizard? Uh, I'm here. I, I have a lot of apologies to make. Don't worry about that now. Police, doctors, they're coming. Too, too late. No, no. Look. David, Jamie, if all three of us try, we can... You, you couldn't move it an inch. I know. I know it well, this old statue. Once I could move it with the flick of my hand and make it appear, disappear. <laughs> the magic's gone. This arrow, the wrong end... Buried as deep in me as in the old wounded fawn. Things, things I, I have to tell you. It's better not to try to talk. Let him, Sarah. He wants to. Jamie, will you tell the most? Jamie, tell him about the last two years. Huh. After your mother died, Miss Sarah, it was in a bad way. The heart mended physically, but it was still broken. And then he, he began to think and brood on it. And he was sure that Mr. Pierce or Mrs. Abbott had killed her. But why would they want to... If your father had died, honey, all the money would have gone to your mother. But mother, or me for that matter... We'd have been willing to share. No, there was no way you could prove them responsible for Sarah's mother's death? None. And you dreamed up this, this, this crazy masquerade just to bring them out in the open? No, I... I tell them, Jamie. A few months ago, Mr. Abbott discovered he had a carcinoma. The prognosis was very bad. So, since I was scheduled to die, 
I decided to advance the date a little. He was worried about you, Miss Sarah, and he wanted to protect you. He was afraid of Mrs. Abbott and Mr. Pierce after what happened to your mother. In this house, from his secret vault, there's a system of reflecting mirrors that lets you see what's happening in any room. And equipment to hear. He knew he could protect you here and maybe unmask Mr. Pierce and his mother. But we said... I didn't need your money. I, I couldn't have left it to them. Rest, dear. Please. The ambulance will be here soon. Too late for me, child. This, this is my real farewell appearance. What is it? Please. You sing no sad songs for me. I had it all. I leave it all. And I'm glad that in the final grand illusion, my old partner shares it. Funny. The day before you came, I cut my hand on this arrow buried in my chest. It was blood. Signaling... The death of the head of the house. Now, Sarah, this statue will never bleed again. We die together, he and I. Now, watch. I am about to disappear before your very eyes. Concentrate. Observe. Be aware. And all the rest is silence. The statue, of course, did not disappear. Restored, it still occupies the grotto. Abbott House is a curiosity. Its periscope mirror system, its intricate sound wiring, its secret passages in the subterranean vault, a mecca for tourists. And the statue doesn't bleed. Enough blood has been let, one hopes, to still the legend forever. I'll be back shortly. On sober reflection, one can't be too sure, of course, that a legend will die. They tend to persist. But since the head of the Abbott household is now Sarah, and she has at least 50 years ahead of her, few of us will be around to find out. Still, circa 2025, if you have nothing better to do, you might visit Abbott House. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Tony Roberts, Grace Matthews, Kurt Benson, and Paul Hecht. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg Special K cereal, new sugar-free diet 7-Up, and Contact, the 12-hour allergy capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. (laughs) 